Hello everyone in the chat, hello. Welcome to this session. I'm glad to spend the next 40 minutes with you to talk about our heterogeneous cluster and heterogeneity aware job configuration project we were working on that is on the house. A little self-interruption first. My name is Yongqing Xiao. I'm a senior staff engineer at Informatica. My colleague Adam Prakash Arroa will be co-presenting this topic with me today. He is a principal proponent engineer at, at Informatica. So both of us have more than five years experience with Spark and four years of experience with Cloud and Kubernetes trusting. Here is the agenda of this session. We begin with the context of this project. So what is Informatica and what is CDIE in Informatica? Then I'll explain the challenges we have been facing with our project, which motivate us for the heterogeneous cluster procurement. Then I will talk about the proposed solution, which starts from auto-detecting the preferred instance type for a given job, and then auto-tune the instance type selection based on the job execution stats, along with the effective spark containing container scheduling, cluster out of scaling based on what job needs. Finally, we'll cut upon the impact of our pipe. So what is Informatica? Informatica is a intelligent cloud data management company. No matter what your use case is, you have a data warehouse or you have a data lake, no matter where your original data is located, no matter who you are, either a business user or a data engineer or a scientist, we offer a tool for you. So we have this data catalog and the governance tool for you to discover and build the lineage of cluster data sources so that you can later easily find the data you need to work on. With our data ingestion tool, we can bring your data from all, all of the places, various places, into a cloud which had unlimited storage. Our data integration and quality tool can help you cleanse your, uh, no, check the quality of your data, cleanse your data, profile data, merge integrate, and all sorts of data enrichment on your data using Spark on Kubernetes. Your data will be loaded into Enterprise Zone and provisioned into your data house with the selected useful data and anything you think, and then uh, which can be later used by various people. We offered a interactive analytics tools for you to analyze your data in an ad hoc way. We have also a stream processing tool for use to real-time analytics. Um, our enriched data can be provisioned for data scientists to do some AI work. So our team is focusing on the third area, which is called CDIE. Let's dive in to see more about it. CDIE stands for Cloud Data Integration Elastic. So first, we offer a easy tool for you to have a no-code design experience, or you can define your data pipeline easily like this. You can, with the tool, you can easily visualize, you can understand it, enhance it, and maintain it that easily, even with hundreds of building blocks in that pipeline. It's still a goal with our tool. Um, the result of this tool is called a CDIE job. Our job can support structured data, like relational data, like raw data, or semi-structured data, like JSON mix now. It supports hierarchical processing, not only at the source and target level, but also on the street transformation. <clears throat> For advanced users, we allow you to plug in your machine learning service uh, operations and your own existing pile of code to do further processing. After the job is defined, you can submit it to a cluster that is Informatica managed on your environment. So <clears throat> we have auto-tuning and auto-scaling tool to lower your cost and uh, achieve the better performance of your job. We even support bot instances and 64 or GPU nodes um, to further lower your cost and boost the performance of the job. We're talking about deployment. If you want to get rid of the hassle of 
a lot of cloud resources, permissions, and security rules, you can use YAML or Superbullet offering, which we managed the cluster in our environment, as long as you give us permission to access the data. For EA onboarding, we also allow you to set up a single node. Like we will set up the whole cluster on the single node. Um, it's even easier for you, right? Um, you can also bring your own Kubernetes existing cluster to us to run our job. So here is a CBIE job look like in details. It is actually a SQL-like ETL job. It's a dab of building blocks. That means direct async click growth. So each building block can be a source or target for midstream transformation. Besides all the standard SQL constructs like filter, aggregator, expression functions, joiner, or union, we also offer a lot of in the web based fancy transformations, such as address validation TX, which validates whether your address actually exists or not, or a matcher TX, which checks the similarity of the data across your roles. Or it can be a REST TX that allows you to connect to external REST service endpoint that you already have, such as a machine learning endpoint, right? You can consume your already trained machine learning model to uh, be annotated to your world, your real data. So each CIE job goes through several layers uh, for, for the final execution. We mentioned the first layer, design layer. Then we have the logical processing layer, which translates this bag of building blocks and optimize it to generate a spot plan from it for the data sources that we like spark doesn't need of this support we even push down some of the mapping logic pipeline logic like, like filters in, into the original data source so eventually a uh, workflow is generated with at least one or more spark application each Spark application has been dosed through the runtime layer to be submitted to the uh, Kubernetes cluster. This runtime layer includes a cluster manager, which starts the cluster on the first submission of your job, and it scales up and down based on the job needs and bring down the cluster when it's idling for enough time. And the service pool is also covered in the setting layer as a component. Then this layer also monitor the job execution status, collect statistics of your job, such as source roles, party roles, right, phases of your job execution. It also auto tunes the job before submitting to the cluster. Last layer is actually the data processing layer, where we run spot jobs on the Kubernetes cluster. So in the summary. Our CDIE has a elastic computer compute cluster, which is a fully managed ephemeral cluster. Um, we recommend people to share the cluster as much as possible in order to lower the cost. So that means the cluster can run all sorts of different types of jobs, right? For biting job, quality job, regular integration job. Um, we auto scale is not only the nodes in the cluster, but also the storage up and down based on the needs. The cluster is responsible for running Spark Shell, which with a rich set of informatical plugins. Those I didn't cover that like Spark UEFs, Spark Pluggable Reader Writer, uh, the data frame, or even custom RDB to do our legacy C++ processing of the data. We also have actually borrowed from long time back our pipe pushdown capability. We we um, have Pipe storage handler for the MP to support some legacy reader and glider. We have tied FUDF as well. So there are lots of plugins. Um, each job of Spark running in an isolated load by default with one driver and a set of excusers. We try to auto tune the execution parameter of the your job uh, as much as possible to achieve the best performance. So now let's see what are the challenges we are facing with the CDIE. So as I mentioned, like 
people are used to uh, share the cluster on Quasal, different users for different job types. So some job creates for memory, some creates for CPU, some can work on GPU, some cannot. Some can support and 64 architecture, some cannot. You know, Cloud Forager usually offers a wide range of node types. CPU intensive, family, like memory intensive, some support accelerated processor like GPU, right? Um, so each instance site fits a specific job type based on uh, the job requirement, the source requirement. Help. Um, it fits it in terms of performance and cost, give you better performance and lower cost. But we know traditional Elastic Cluster usually supports homogeneous worker nodes. Only one node type can be configured for one cluster. But given that the job nature, there is no one size fits all solution. For choosing a node type for a cluster with such a shared cluster. And right now, user has to configure a different type of cluster and um, assign job individually to their best fitting cluster. So uh, let's give an example. We know, you know, we offer GPU cluster versus a CPU cluster. Before we show you the test uh, result of the performance and cost contracts between these two, let's talk about how we select the, the node type for this test. So because Rapid Spark Accelerator require NVIDIA GPU, so first we require NVIDIA GPU-based node. That's why we choose this G4DN node family. And then for general purpose, one node usually has one virtual CPU to 4G memory ratio. Since we know Spark already requires a large memory, that's, we, that's why we choose 32 gigabytes of node. So that ends up at 2x larger G40 ends. To match up that, we choose this general purpose MD5 2x large with the same number of resources on GPU and uh, memory. Also, it has matchable instance storage, matchable Intel processor, and um, network capacity. Uh, briefly, um, the price-wise, one GPU is almost equivalent to four. So from this table, you can linearly calculate the cost and verify that theory. You're an for customer, as long as the performance is under the SLA, like their expected uh, time. They care more about the overall cost, right, after running this heavy workload. We can see the cost between MD5, the CPU node, versus GPU node is 1 to 1.767. Uh, so then on uh, the job time, we can think it up reverse proportional to get an equivalent overall cost. If the CPU extrusion time is 1.67 times of the GPU time, then you get the equivalent cost. If your CPU time, extrusion time, is more than 1.67 than the GPU time, then you trust GPU. That saves your cost. And also, of course, lose your performance. Uh, otherwise, you lose cost with GPU, right? So let's see the testing result. This is just a partial testing result. I'm not showing you everything. From here, you can see that for the last two queries, GPU does much better than CPU. Performance ratio is three, more than three, more than two. So for these two cases, GPU is definitely the win. But for the other six queries, you can see GPU gives you a little performance boost. And the ratio is all below 1.67. That means you lose cost with GPU cluster when running those jobs. The reason why GPU doesn't gain much for these jobs is because it involves implement the plugin, which currently does not support TGN. Besides that, we have also other limitations with GPU cluster. By default, you create a GPU cluster without any configuration of your job, every job will be configured to request on GPU. That means if the node has one extruder started, 
nothing else can be severely damaged, right? So as we mentioned, the sound jobs does not support you or part of it. When such job runs, you're wasting your GPU because that job consumes CPU only, right? And there is no executor can be started on the same node. You're wasting CPU. Well, on the other hand, if you are with him, GP, if you are executor support, if your job actually supports GPU, then you're consuming GPU, but you're also consuming a little bit of the CPU. That is, your CPU resource will be lost because the usual ratio between CPU and GPU is 1 to 8, or even larger, right? You're wasting either GPU or CPU based on your job nature. That's why we currently require a user to manually tune on at each job level to say whether this can run on TPU, whether it's not, to reduce such waste. So, to stop this challenge, here is our proposed solution. We introduce a heterogeneous cluster with different node types mixing. It can be CPU, GPU, or other types. We also decide the best suitable instance type based on your job's resource characteristic and co computation complex. Furthermore, we also improve the decision based on the extension stacks and use that for next run. We have effective pot scheduling um, of the job and to achieve better resource utilization of the our cluster. Finally, we will auto scale the nodes of each type based on the buttons. With that, I'll pause and um, pop on to Adam to explain the details. Then, question, but even as a big background. So, from this slide, I will walk you through like how the different kind of utilization job and better we should do over the head and cluster uh, using the Spark HTR and the Spark monitoring. So, in this sample like example, I have built in a three node. You can have a separate node group as well, where the node group one is with the x 66 64 Firefox EP transfer. Node group two is with the ARF 64 based CPU transfer, and third is like G based. So you can have any other node group like FPGA or other um, as related computing as well. But this is just a sample like Netflix. We have three Java and Java in favor of the CPU cores, where the GPU node, uh, GPU Java in favor of the node group 3 that is enabled with the GPU instances. So this is the one example which you have seen in the last slide. There are a lot of computation units is uh, involved in this different division job and then group together to perform a particular task. For example, uh, there is a source and target is several back in ORC or not having a SC connection. Although you can have a different connections as well like ADL, GCP, GDBC, etc. Expression is doing a heavy mathematical computation. Joiner is joining our data pipeline coming from the expression DS and the TV table. And uh, uh, Joiner could be like has built or short of it. And then router would be routing our data pipeline coming from the joiner to the different target. So each computation unit can have its own characteristic. For example, a computation unit which is involving not in memory computation, it would be a memory intensive. For example, you are having a party data connector and a cell data processing, infra transformation and filters with a large memory cache will come under this category. I have intentions like uh, NFS with file connector or task formation which are configured with the cache overflow to the disk or task formation which are requiring a data shuffling like activator, shorter because they require a data shuffle between two spot containers that can decide on a two different machine as well. So since the data shuffling which will happen in these two containers as well and those transformation could be a network intensive as well. Also data connector with the various cloud storage like again the S3, ADLS and GCP. The field that's like uh, those transformation which are requiring most computations like uh, expression DX or the hierarchical data parser which would parse the JSON data into the hierarchical records or the data quality uh, like address validation or the data masking transformation where you masking your sensitive data using several masking rules. So those all transformation will come under the CPU nature. GPC Devon would be like the data which is larger in amount and uh, large shorters or the file parser like CS. All the job which can run over the CPU can run on the ARN64 as well. Uh, except 
you are using certain task formation which require in a native NIPs like C, C++, C++ or Python NIP and those libraries are not available for this architecture. Those computation units may fail on this uh, ARM6 report. Other test uh, characteristics which we consider is like external source condition uh, restrictions like a font frame DB connection in which like if the threshold is reached then data pipeline would be expected to be slower than uh, than user. Also the data card nerdy and the computation complexity. Data card nerdy like if you are having a low data card in a day, then GPU will not be able to save much time than the CPU though. CPU. So not prefer to use the expensive charge type just to gain a little bit. So um so now we know like each computation unit is having their own characteristic. So what we do we create an old type manifest matrix maybe will look like this. Where uh, x axis is showing all the computation uh, units present in the uh, data integration job, and the y axis is showing all the node group you are having in your Kubernetes cluster. That is called me like x86, DRN, GPU, or any other kind of. So each computation unit will compute the score uh, based on some characteristics, uh, and that will be done by the computation unit handler. And that will happen when we are translating our data integration job into the Spark Scala code. So more on the shaping is for computation. For example, there is a computation unit A. One tech who scored the uh, score for these three type of node group. First, we will be checking like for the GPU, it is supported or not. If it is not supported, then the score would be the geo. It means job will still run, but it will not utilize your resource like a uh, GPU. It will utilize the CPU core. So if it is supported, then the score would be computed uh, based on the characteristics of the GPU and it will be passed into the function and it will react into the score. So we have defined our own function for it. And for the CPU, like CPU could have a three different category as per the cloud vendors. Like uh, it could be a memory intensive, it could be a IO intensive, or it could be a CPU intensive. Now you want to identify whether your job comes under which category. So for that, we have created a function that will bar the characteristics of the computation here and will give the uh, score based on like whether it's a memory intensive, whether it's I intensive and then CPU intensive. Now third is the ARM64. They are cheaper in nature and still have a better performance. So these are used for the cost optimized data pipeline where customer want to or user want to save the cost but they still want to have a better performance. So we use the ARM64 in which we checked uh, whether it's supported. If it is not supported, then the job would fail at all. Like it will not use any other sort. So in this case, we assign the score as a negative infinity so that the uh, job should not never should we should do over this instance tag. And if it is supported, then we are having a function of the job priority. Lower is the priority, then higher the scores and higher the pricing, lower is this. Now we have computed the score of each computation unit. Now we wanted to know the overall score of the data integration job. We are using a function like uh, which will multiply the weight of the computation unit with the each individual score and it will be taking an average up by the number of computation units present in the data integration job. So you would be wondering why the weights are being used. For example, there could be two computation units. One computation unit is taking up more time and other is taking a less than. So it means the, the score of the competition with it too should have a higher weight because it is spending more time over the cluster. So these weights can be calculated based on your prior information or of things of your knowledge or you can train your AI model on the experimental data. AI model could be like a deep neural network or artificial neural network which can help us computing these weights. So, such is code which will be computed would be called as a static score and the job executor would be the score base and it will try to schedule your job on the preferred instance stack as much as possible based on the score computer. Now in the summary, I would say like each computation unit handler will compute the score of each computation unit in the data integration job. The score would be based on the resource consumption nature or the resource configuration of the computation unit. Other factors like data priority and the complexity of the computation unit will also be in. And the AI training model could be used to compute the weight of uh, each computation unit to compute the final static score. Now, 
let's say uh, we have completed a score of the particular data integration job and we have scheduled that job to the preferred instance stack. But it will, it will be not always true that a uh, job where we have scheduled would show the same kind of performance. So in this case, like we heal the score. Like after the execution and monitoring the Spark, monitoring data like the Spark field of plan and full or the executor task metric, we heal the score and that score will be called as a dynamic score. And the figure plan would be like uh, of job or stages or the phase or like uh, any other label. And Spark monitoring data would be like how much the computation uh, of the data integration job had back or particular stage has spent over the forces and what number of the byte had we read or written or what was the number of partition being done and what was the amount of support data or actually which hardware is being used. If you see for the Perry 70, all the strain of the written uh, Perry is executed over the GPU. It means the job is more inclined to the GPU and will show the better performance if it is scheduled over the GPU. On other case, like since we are talking about like more about the Spark monitoring, so you would you would be wondering like what are other meta metrics which can help us in defining the computation nature of the computation unit. So for that, I have attached two links where we can refer several Spark testers which are available to identify the job nature. And in the right hand side, uh, in earlier diagram, I showed like all the stages were running over the GPU, hence it's a GPU in nature. But in the second diagram now, our first stage that is printer is running over the GPU but the second stage that is the expression expression is not running over the GPU because of unsupported expression. In this case, data representation is getting changed because GPU is the particular based processing and the CPU is the row based curve. So uh, the GPU to coordinate to row and then again row to coordinate is happening hence it will create an extra overhead for the data integration job to be executed. So such cases will not be uh, motivated for a GPU, right? So we take these feedback from the Spark 4 and compute the dynamic case score. Second thing which we use is the Spark verification tool. Let's say we have computed the uh, score and that is preferred over the CPU. And now every time we are running a uh, job over the CPU and we are taking a, a Spark monitoring data that is only applicable for the uh, CPU, not for the GPU, right? So we will be keep correcting the score for the CPU, not for the GPU. For that, we are using a Spark Verification tool, which will take the Spark monitoring data and run info as the input, and it will generate the metric like as you know, where it will identify in a particular application or data integration job how much spare uh, data frame duration we call and how much the GPU was having the opportunity. And based on that, it will be computing the GPU or duration and the GPU speed up amount. So if the GPU speed up is greater than 3 or greater than 2, then we will uh, prefer to be run over the GPU. Otherwise, we can run over the CPU. So since in this talk, I'm more talking about the GPU or CPU, but it can be used the same uh, from that can be used for the C within the CPU itself also when you are having a stance like a memory intensive, IO intensive or uh, or any other kind of network intent. So after computing both the score, we will purchase both the score into the repository server. And when the same job will be executed again, we will find those scores and we are uh, scheduling the job as per the notes as we find uh, by this. And you would be wondering like it would be possible like uh, if particular data integration job had been modified by the user by adding some new computation unit or or like uh, removing some computation unit, then what will happen? Or also when we are having a new product release where some performance enhancement has been added for particular computation unit. So in those cases, we erase whatever the uh, score was computed earlier and we will repeat the same cycle again for those data integration job. So uh, before that, like, uh, if customer or user don't want to use a uh, score based uh, uh, schedule, then we can always override that data integration job with the tax declaration that uh, they need only this mode type group for this particular data integration job. So in that case, they will ignore the score based schedule and we will get the uh, user based prefer. Since we, uh, job executor has routed the job to the best preferred instance type, now the Kubernetes schedule will take in. 
So before going into the Kubernetes scheduling, I will walk you through about the node affinity feature where, uh, for example, for the Spark container, I have to find out two node affinity, one for the CPU and other for the GPU. The weight for the GPU is 20 and CPU is 100, so it's more in grand about the CPU. So the Spark container first will try to schedule over the uh, node group which is having a CPU node pack. And if it is not available, then it will be running uh, or uh, will take the node group which is having a GPU node pack. And if both are not available, then it will kick the auto spinner to add a new node that would be the CPU weight. So now I will tell you in the five left point like how the uh, Spark driver and executor can be schedule over the few point. So first we will be starting a cluster with only a single type of node that is the uh, tenant buffer CPU node. And our Spark driver will be always scheduled over this uh, tenant buffer CPU node because uh, Spark driver don't do much computation. Actual computation happens only on the executor side. So when the driver has been scheduled, it will request the executor and the executor would be a CPU major or the gray major as defined by the and data integration job, then it will schedule the GPU executor only on the GPU node. But the CPU executor, it can schedule over the CPU node. If it is not available, then the node affinity of the GPU will come where it will try to use the CPU available on the GPU node. It will not use the GPU, but it will use the unused core of the CPU. And uh, also user can define the priority of the data integration job. In this case, uh, the lower would be the priority and uh, it will look for the cheaper instance set. If higher is the pri priority, then it will look for the better performance instance set. So, uh, for example, let's say uh, if our driver is trying to schedule the executor and uh, no resources left, like if executor is what to schedule and three heading schedule and two are still left. In this case, the Kubernetes will scale up, uh, take the a cluster auto scaling. In the cluster auto scaling, the user can define the max node count, where in particular time the cluster will not exceed uh, with that n number of node count. And the default quota of the each node group uh, we take at like uh, particular like 70 CPU as a 50 ARM as 50, but user can always override the default quota as well. So uh, when the data integration job is requested in our CPU, then it will scale up the CPU node and rescale the GPU node and uh, if the data integration job traffic is requesting only the GPU thing that it will rescale all the CPU node and it will scale up only the GPU node group. So uh, since we are scheduling a CPU container also over the GPU node then uh, you would be thinking like a GPU node will never get a chance to rescale. How the descaling will happen if a container, spark container for the CPU nature uh, will keep shooting over the GPU. Or that we have uh, uh, we have modified a uh, Kubernetes scheduler such that uh, it will schedule the CPU container on the GPU node only if there is a GPU container running. It means if there is no GPU container then there would be no CPU container on that node and the sufficient time for descaling. Uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster will get and it will send down the cluster. So here is the design flow uh, for all the discussion I have done so far so that it can give you graphical overview where a user can create the data integration job using UI and once the job is being created it will be submitted and job compiler will compute the score for data integration job while first uh, computing the score of computation unit and then multiplying by the weight and then it will send to the job translator uh, where it will translate the uh, data integration job to the spanner up board along with the spore what they had bought from the previous state and will transfer back to the job executor. Job executor is the spore based scheduler. Uh, it will look on the spore of the different node group and will, it will route a uh, job on the preferred instance type by the spore. And after the job execution, we will be collecting as stats and as part one and four and will send back to the job compiler. Job compiler will heal the static score and we create the dynamic score which will be used for the feature run of the same data integration job and uh, uh, that score will be persisted for in the repository server. So uh, 
now this is a confused slide we are we are saying like the solution could be very simplistic in nature because user has to create the heterogeneous cluster using few clicks only also they do not need to worry about like where the job is being run like whether it's using using a memory intensive nature instances or the GPU instances or the ARM chip key for base instances we are deciding based on the sport Although customer can override their defense, but uh, in our solution, we are creating a node type defense matching and deciding a best whatever is done. Also, we set the job properties with the um, most optimum performance so that our job can run faster and save cost. Also, in our experiment, we have seen like we have seen the performance up to 5x for the GPU suitable job and the cost saving like 72% with the traditional cluster which we are using. So it is efficient in the term of performance as well as in the term of cost. Thanks. Any question? Well, oh yeah, just to uh, uh, elaborate on the far qualification pool, uh, you mentioned that you can compute a uh, film in a, a number for uh, the potential improvement that GPU can offer compared to the CPU. But how did that number uh, derived from all the metrics? Yeah, so what we do like uh, for each chain we collect the metric. Okay, we have to find our own function and uh, that will identify like uh, this particular plan in four which is heavy corresponding uh, correspond to which computation unit. And for that to uh, what the nature Spark has shown for this computation unit. Our initial guess was like this computation unit is going to be a memory intensive whether that number of bytes is being read or written by that spark or not. If it is not, then it is not a OBC a memory intensive uh, or IO intensive in nature, right? Uh, or we can say like if that bit uh, we said like very uh, if particular computation unit is a memory intensive. So it means there should be some shuffling of the data should happen or in memory computation should happen. So if in the spark chart we def we found like whatever the we have expected or whatever the threshold we have completed uh, during the static time was means actually there or not. If it is not greater than that then we will uh, then like it's more in the memory intensive in nature. Okay. So we have some static rules to bar those or uh, spark monitoring data to the final news. Right. Uh, I was wondering uh, can this technology be adapted for work with on-prem Kubernetes process? Yeah, it can, but it is, uh, this solution can be to, to any kind of scheduler like Yarn scheduler or Kubernetes. Since we are using a Kubernetes, we have a maker for the Kubernetes, not for other. But the things are basically uh, score this, so score can be computed like on end. That provided that uh, that particular left up over that submission is information about the spark monitor. So is the source code publicly available or the five bit search is by Ifmeric? This is not perfectly available. But we are using more uh, kind of like uh, open source code like you when it is we are using or we are using a patch spark which is uh, like uh, provide the spark monitoring data open uh available open you so uh, we're just the uh, four which is computing has good with modern level other than that everything is available and open i was just curious if you want to like make that open for it by project like yeah we, foundation oh, well, how then what's gonna be because test did you for it? yeah that is a feature plan and uh, we are thinking how we can incorporate with that work You mentioned that you've adjusted or changed the scheduler for Kubernetes. Uh, is that the autoscaler side, or is it purely is that the core people scheduler in Kubernetes? What what did you do? Right now, we have a, you know, a custom scheduler that belongs to the from the client. We modify that scheduler. It's on top of the default scheduler. So. What was the what was the purpose? With while control one to um, submit the container to the GPU node, that, so that they can scale it down. If there is no GPU required, uh, to take it.
So suppose you have a GPU container starter, yeah. right? Since the GPU has additional CPU resources, we can also schedule some CPU containers on that same node. But once the CPU, uh, the GPU node uh, container is gone, is completed, this GPU node, we don't want it to last long to serve all CPU, all containers. We want to give it a, a time to to complete all the CQ no uh, with containers and then have a chance to scale it down because GPU is not set. Okay, so yeah, I, w I wouldn't see why that would need a custom scheduler. Okay. We, we, you know, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from the unicorn side of things, so we we ride yeah. the complete our, our own scheduler, so. That should work with the default scheduler. Okay, we'll investigate more, and we're also evaluating the uh, use of Unicorn in our company. We'll evaluate them at that time. And for the for the older scaler, because the you could even use the older scaler to do that work for you, um, evict jobs from and and even evict jobs from the. Uh, from GPU nodes and 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 cl clean it up for you, so because that that removes the dependency of you you writing your old scheduler and then makes the solution uh, a bit simpler. Mm -hmm. We right now do not have preemption because we don't want to be interrupt that existing green job a lot. Yeah, but later it's possible to um give. A chance for GPUs to shape down, or give trust for more, more higher priority trust. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention.